Can a woman be president? This is a perplexing question for many Christians. We are living in a day when we are confronted with so many political issues that are divisive within the Christian community. If the question is rightfully understood, it actually should be stated in the following way. Can a woman serve in any office of government? We are left only with the scripture as our final authority on this issue. God has revealed to us in the Bible that God himself allowed women to serve in roles of leadership in the governmental realm. For example, in Judges 4, 4 through 5, we read, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. There is no condemnation for Deborah's actions in the scripture. In the scripture, we also find women in roles of magistrates that are recognized and are not rebuked for holding such a position. For example, the Queen of Sheba interacts with King Solomon. And the wisest man in history does not rebuke her for serving in the position of a magistrate. We find that recorded in 1 Kings 10, in verses 1 through 12. The scripture also points out that Queen Esther is a woman who held a position of magisterial authority with her husband. You can look at that in Esther 2.17. The Bible does not forbid a woman from holding office, a civil office, in any explicit text. It does forbid her to hold positions of authority within the church, such as she cannot be a deacon, an elder, or pastor, since all these have the requirement that those who serve in ecclesiastical offices must be a male. 1 Timothy 3.2 and Titus 1.6. Thus can a woman be president? Or again, for that matter, hold any office? Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that a woman, if she does not interfere with her home duties as a wife and a mother, of course, with the approval of her husband, she may hold a public office as a civil magistrate. However, the bad news is that when women hold office, it is a sign of judgment against the men of that nation. We are told in Isaiah 3.12, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the ways of your path. Well, some might ask about John Knox opposing the Queen, Queen Elizabeth of England. I believe, though, that in writing against the woman holding office that Knox did was not so much about holding a civil office, but rather as a woman, she also was the head of the church. She was the reigning monarch. And because of that, Knox wrote against her. We are under a judgment in America. Judgment is not coming. It is here. And it will only get worse. The fault lies with an impotent church that no longer preaches the pure gospel of Jesus Christ and seeking to implement the whole counsel of God as it should apply to every realm. It seems that we cannot find righteous men to lead us according to God's standard of righteousness. And we are really short on righteous people voting according to biblical principles rather than their pocketbooks. Thus, if I am forced to make a choice between a properly qualified woman over against a conservative or liberal statist man. I will take the woman with the acknowledged humiliation that indeed we are under the judgment of God. And yes, the children are our oppressors. And those who have led us, they led us into error. And we are continuously being led into destruction and more judgment. God save us from wicked and evil leaders. We must ask God to raise up godly men 
who will lead this nation to righteousness.